Praise be to God. We want to thank you once again for joining us in the study of God's Word about marriages. And the last time we were with you, we talked about a house divided, and we said that there was a second part of it that we truly needed to talk to you about. And uh, also, so we want to um, title this A House Divided Part 2. And what we want to really base this upon is that you don't have to start with a house divided. Now, what, I, what am I talking about? Because many times people get into a marriage from the very beginning, from the onset, with a house divided because of they did not get premarital counseling. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that's very important that you get premarital counseling by someone who is equipped by the Holy Spirit of God in order to bring your whole idea of what you believe a marriage should be and bring it under subjection to the Holy Spirit of God. And many times people don't allow their marriage or the beginning of their marriage to be subjected unto the Holy Spirit of God. And that's so very important for a Christian marriage. Now, if you just want a marriage where you two people come together just like the, uh, the infidels do or just like uh, those who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, then you can have that. But if you want a spiritual bound marriage, a marriage that is set in forth by God, then you need to allow the Word of God to penetrate your ideas so that way you can know what God's purpose is for you in marriage. And that is simply building a foundation, brethren, if you want a foundation in your marriage. So to, to put yourself in a position that you will have a house that is not divided from the very beginning, you need to seek premarital counseling. You know, many times I have counseled uh, young couples and older couples before they got married, and there are many things that are brought out in that relationship. Even though people uh, might know certain things about an individual, there seems not to focus upon those things, but rather they look at nothing but the good things that are happening in their lives at the moment. They are caught up in the moment of one might call love. But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that when you come to a point like that, you need an objective voice in order to be able to share with you and to allow you to know that there is something more to marriage than the day of being married. Now you have to live together. And some of the things that we ask, for instance, in our premarital uh, counseling are questions like these. Why are you getting married? Do you both fully understand that your choice of a spouse will ultimately determine the success of your marriage? And that premarital counseling is the only godly aid to uh, setting a foundation in your lives, but doesn't guarantee marital success. It is the spouse that you choose. Or, in other words, the spouse that you allow God to choose for you. When you allow God to choose the mate for you, you will have the right mate. Now is just about working with it. So if you set a, a foundation through premarital counseling, it will be much more simpler and much more easier for you to be able to walk through this life in a joyful marriage if you allow the Lord to work with it. And now we have many questions that we ask, and we ask those questions because we desire that everything be brought out and put on the table. And many times couples don't do that before they get married. They don't put everything on the table. But in premarital counseling, uh, 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 a spiritual counselor will put everything on the table. And when they put everything on the table, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there we have seen many different reactions when things got on the table that the other mate the other person did not know anything about and all of a sudden it's brought on the table 
Now, many fear this because they believe that somehow it will break their relationship off. And so sometimes they'll come to the counseling session after talking to one another and say, well, you know, we're not going to share this. We're not going to reveal this, but we're not we'll reveal that. But what we usually do, we usually break them up. Linda will take someone, take the wife and share with her. And then I will take the potential husband and I will share with him. And by that way, the Holy Spirit of God begins to reveal some things in order that those couple might come together. Because what our desire is, more than anything, is to see you walk in a successful marriage, a successful relationship, a joyful relationship. That's what we are seeking. Praise be to God. And it can only be done when proper. That's right. Proper counseling is done before you get married. So, on our second uh, study, or our point two, is the foundation of premarital training, and it will ultimately help you get through some things that you would not necessarily get through without the counseling that is necessary uh, through the Word of God. And you know, we said uh, in our last study. In the 26th verse it reads, And if Satan rise up against himself, Jesus said, and be divided, he cannot stand but had an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods. Now this is what we're going to talk about in part three of uh, a divided house. How to be able to stand and who is called to stand in that kind of situation in a home. But premarital counseling. It is so very important if you desire not to have a house divided. God bless you. God keep you. It is our prayer for you this day.